Well, when it's close, the red curve sits right on top of the green curve. So it kind of starts out like this, no, no distinction. Then, at a certain point in the past, let's see. Um, what do I w how do I want to do this? Uh, let's pick a particular time. So that's a particular distance. Uh, at that time, the scale factor is smaller on the red curve than it is on the green curve. If the scale factor is smaller, the redshift has to be bigger. So what's going to be happening here is the, the red line is going to gradually diverge from the green line in just the same way it does here in such a way that at a given distance, that is to say a given time in the past, the redshift is bigger, which means the scale factor is smaller. And then the brown curve will kind of do the same thing, only more so. So this is what we expect to see. This is omega greater than 1, uh, omega less than 1, but still greater than 0, omega equal to 0. So all the Hubble diagrams we've looked at so far have been down at this end here, where they're all lying on top of each other. But you can imagine that if you get out to big redshifts, redshift of 1, at a redshift of 1, the scale factor is half of what it is today. You're halfway back to the, big, to the Big Bang in terms of scale factor. You can imagine that these things would really look quite different, as indeed they do in this little plot I've drawn, uh, when the scale factor is half of what it is today. If the scale factor is 1% less than it is today, you'll have a tough time telling these things apart. So what do you need to do? What you want to do is measure redshifts and distances, plot them on this plot, and see which of these lines turns out to be true. What do you need to do that? What you need is a really bright standard candle. Why does it need to be bright? Because you need to be able to see it at large distances. Uh, and the thing that happened in the 1990s and that has transformed cosmology is that we are now able to make these kinds of measurements all the way out to a redshift of 1, and in some cases further. And the particular standard candle we're looking at are the so-called type 1a supernovae. Uh, I'll discuss what these are later on, but for the moment let's just, uh, uh, let's just take the point that they're standard candles, therefore we know how bright they are, and they're really, really bright. Uh, absolute magnitude of something like minus 19. Uh, so they're as bright as whole galaxies. Uh, in fact, they often outshine the galaxy they're in. These are exploding stars, and as I say, we'll talk about the details of exactly how these things work later on. So type 1a supernovae turn out to be these really bright standard candles, and you can make this kind of measurement on them. Uh, I have the data here, uh, but it, uh, I have to talk about one more technical thing about the way the data is presented. Um, let's see. Ordinarily, the way you tend to plot these things, as I said, is you plot redshift versus uh, abs apparent minus absolute magnitude. This is a quantity known as the distance modulus, and it's related to distance uh, by the equation we had before. Uh, and so then what you get is you get this, and you get this, and you get this, uh, as, uh, as we've written it down before. And the problem is uh, that uh, it's hard to tell the differences between these lines, because the, uh, this is now being measured in magnitude. The separation out here at a redshift of 1, uh, this is about uh, this interval here in magnitude, let me write it that way, is about, oh, I don't know, a third of a magnitude or something like that. But this whole plot is, you know, if you go all the way back to time zero, this whole plot is, I don't know, uh, can be 10 to 20 magnitudes. And so it's just kind of hard to see these little differences between the things. So they plot it differently uh, so that you can bring out these slight differences. And what they do is they do this. They plot a quantity called delta m minus m. What's that? That's the difference between the measured 
uh, distance modulus and the distance modulus uh, that you would expect uh, at that particular redshift in an empty universe. So m minus m in at a given redshift in an empty universe. So what does the green curve look like? The green curve is omega equals zero. That is to say an empty universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just a straight line at zero. Because it's always true that the empty universe minus what you expect for the empty universe is zero. So <coughs> what you've done basically is you've taken this plot and tipped it 45 degrees so that uh, this, uh, uh, this green line is straight at zero. And then the brown line uh, will look like this. Uh, sorry, the red line will look like this. Uh, the brown line will look like this. This again, omega greater than 1, omega less than 1, omega 0. So that's just convenient because then you can have your scale here go from, I don't know, uh, minus 0.3 to plus 0.3 or something like this. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so you can see the, uh, the whole thing. Actually, I've got the signs wrong, haven't I? Uh, because bright things are minus, so let's just put it as bright and faint. So we've done our very best to confuse you, right? First of all, we started out with a magnitude system that's upside down and logarithmic. Second of all, we took the intuitively simple plot of uh, scale factor versus time, which actually tells you what you need to know about the universe. Is it getting bigger? Is it getting smaller? Is it going to have a big crunch? And we transformed it into this rather stranger thing where uh, the things we are plotting are the things we measure, but it's not at all obvious how this translates into what the universe is doing. Then, not content with that, we take that whole thing and subtract something you don't understand from it uh, so as to flatten out one of the lines. Okay? So it's a three-part exercise in confusion. Uh, and I would say that the number one conceptually difficult thing in this entire course is to understand how this plot relates to this plot and more difficultly how this plot relates back to the scale of the universe plot. Uh, and that, uh, if you can understand that, you can understand 21st century cosmology. Uh, and so we will uh, work on this a little bit. So if you're not quite getting it yet, don't, don't, don't freak out. Uh, you'll have plenty more opportunities to discuss it, I assure you. Uh, in any case, uh, even if you're a little puzzled at the moment, uh, let's look at this plot because this is how the data show up. So there's an omega equals zero line which is straight, and then lines below it uh, are increasingly large values of omega. And so if you go out and measure a bunch of points, uh, you expect to see them kind of lying in a straight line here, and then you expect to see them falling below that straight line. And depending on how far below the straight line they fall, you can determine whether the universe is going to recollapse or not. So if they end up you know, down here, it's going to recollapse. If they end up here, it's going to expand forever. Okay? <coughs> 